Very elaborate lacy patterns are possible with the spraying technique. This is done by creating holes in the fabric. How do you make these holes? How do you plan the placement of these holes? I will show you the basic stitch as well as a method to map out the placement of these holes. We begin with the interlinking stitch. Basic interlinking. An overview. We begin with the threads set on a frame. The basic interlinking stitch, Z twist, has you pick up a thread from the back, put the front one down. All the way across the row, these threads twist in pairs. And here at the end of the row, we're still twisting in pairs. I use graph paper to map out the stitches. I use one square for each thread. Here you see the squares marked off in pairs, representing the pairing of threads that happen in the first row. I'm right-handed, work from the right to the left, so you see the number one on the right-hand side. Threads engage as cloth on the plate row, also called the braiding row, and this features that three-thread edge stitch. Here I begin the plate row by picking up two threads from the back and putting one down. That's a right edge stitch. Then I work my way across with plain stitches. Pick one up, put one down, pick one up, put one down. And at the left edge I pick up one and I put two threads down. This is a left edge stitch. And here you see the graphic representation. On either side you see that stitch that's three squares long. Those are the edge stitches. After the plate row is the overplate or the follow-up row. Plain stitches all the way across, one up, one down. Nothing interesting happens on this row. It's one up, one down, all the way across through to the end. The graph paper shows you the brick structure that begins to form and the manner in which the threads are paired differently on each row. Now, what would happen if we worked edge stitches in the middle of the row? We're on a plate row. I begin by picking up two, putting one down, and I work a couple of plain stitches. And now, just to be doing something different, I'm going to work a left edge stitch. That's pick up one, put two down in the middle of the row. And this has to be followed by a right edge stitch, pick up two, put one down. And then I work some plain stitches. And then maybe let's try that again. A left edge stitch, pick up one, put two down, just like you do at the left edge of the row, and then I have to work a right edge stitch. Pick up two, put one down. And I'll work to the end of the row here, plain stitches. And the last stitch is a left edge stitch. Pick up one, put two down. So what have we done? Well, let's look. The result is two holes that seem to extend up through the previous row. And now looking at the graph representation, you can see that those edge stitches are situated right below the place where two stitches on the previous row meet. Here I've colored in those edge stitches so you can see them better. The right edge stitch is in blue and the left edge stitches are in green. I've also made a dark black vertical stripe to indicate where those holes are happening. After the plate row, the braiding row, we have a follow-up row. This is one up, one down, all the way across. Nothing interesting happens on the follow-up row. You see that hole stays there. The stitches are in pairs all the way across, but they don't close up the hole. The holes stay there. Nothing of interest happens on the follow-up or the overplate row. And what does it look like on this row? Well, you can see those two holes are just a little bit longer. And here's the graphic representation. You can see the black line. The crack extends down through the follow-up row. All interesting things happen on the braiding row or the plate row. This is where the threads engage with each other to form cloth or not. This is where we decide to continue the crack or to close it and close the hole. How does that work? Okay, here's the braiding row the right edge stitch, and then some plain stitches across until we get to that first hole. If we make a left edge stitch here, one up, two down, like on the left side, 
And then, right after that, we're going to make a right edge stitch where we pick up two and put one down. Then that hole is going to continue. On this other spot here, however, if we carry on with plain stitches all the way across, one up, one down, this will close that hole. And at the end of the row, we can look and see on the right side, we've got quite the slit forming, and the other side, we've got a hole that's now closed. This is the way I would represent this on graph paper. On the right side, you see the slit continuing. On the left side, there's the hole that's now closed. And here is a pattern you might want to try. It's got a series of holes that form a lovely little flower pattern. This is what that flower pattern looks like, worked up in some yarn. And here's a scarf that uses the flower patterns throughout and the slits at the end as the fringes are formed. You can find information on spraying lace and much, much more in my book, Spraying Unsprung by me, Carol James.